Hello and welcome back to the Your Golf Travel podcast. Today I'm here with Oliver. And hello. We, hello. <laughs> and we are going to be speaking about the Costa del Sol, aka the Costa del Golf. Very much so. It uh, doesn't get much better for golf than that, does it? Yeah, one of the best locate, one of the best destinations, obviously, in Europe for golf. I would say. Undoubtedly, there's such an amazing array of courses. You know, budgets from you know value to you know we've got Ryder Cup golf courses at, at Valderrama. Yeah, I think there's something for everyone there. Um, so obviously, starting off, what is the best course you've played in the Costa del Sol? That is a really good question. Obviously, it's coming from you. <laughs> I feel like of all the ones I've played there, and definitely sort of one that really stood out for me was actually La Reserva. So La Reserva is in Sota Grande, and just everything about it, the service, um, the condition of the golf course, I don't think I've ever played faster greens than that. Um, the layout's really, really playable, so it's got a bit more room off the tee, so it's really good if you're gonna go in with a, with a mixed group. But yeah, I played there with Mark Crossfield, Coach Lockie, and uh, Rory, YGD Rory, um, quite a few years ago there, and just, I'd heard it was good, and it's, it's held, um, uh, it's actually held some tour events in the past, but it just was so much better than I thought it was gonna be. Um, you know, little, little things, everyone loves a pyramid of golf balls on the driving range, we, we definitely got that there. And also like the bar and uh, well, the 19th, and it's, they've got this patio that's um, just it's set up at quite a high point in the course, looking out of the golf course and out towards Soto Grande. We're like, wow, what a place. I've told so many people to go and play it, but the one key thing I keep saying to them is like, make sure you arrive early um, and try and stay a bit later, because that is just a great setting to, uh, to have a beer, whether or not you got I was going to say three points, but not to get three points. I was going to say, but if you, you know, if you got like thirty points or forty points, like you're going to have a great time just uh, sitting back there and relaxing after your round. Yeah, like I've played that course, and I feel like a lot of the tee shots got quite big elevations on them. I can't remember what hole it is. There's a really nice par five, which is massively downhill, swings to the right. It's got a bit of water by the green. Uh, you'll see them on the Costa del Sol vlogs, which are coming out soon. Where me and Leo played the course, but you know, the course, like you said, it's just pure. It is, really yeah, yeah, and just like it's, you know, it's, it's not just driver everywhere. There's a bit of, um, you know, bit of course management. You've got to really just pick your lines off the tee and miss a lot of bunkers or, or drop offs. But yeah, I just I thought it was absolutely brilliant. So, um, so yeah, so La Reserva for me. What about and you? For Ali? me, Tor Cabrada. So designed by Jose Pepe, who is called the Picasso of golf, and playing Tor Cabrada is such a unique golf course, like. It's got a bit of like some quirky holes. It's got like an 80 yard par three, which some people would be like, well, that should be on a pitch and putt. But it sort it's of just sits though, right with it. it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Just I mean, like, like that's a, sorry to jump in, but just that like, yeah, that, that, that hole in particular, I remember I played that with, uh, with Mark, Lockie and, mm -hmm. and Rory. I was the only one that hit the green. Like that's it's, uh, it's such a small hole, but it's just fiddly. It's got all different layers on it. And if you go long, you're completely, uh, you know, it's a lost ball. So yeah, I, yeah, I love I love Torre Cabrano. And again, I think what's what's good about that is really really playable. Like yeah. you've got a bit again, this bit more room off the tee. That I think that's really important because no one likes to be losing golf balls uh, uh, all day every day. But yeah, definitely the it's very playable, very scorable. I think mm -hmm. you know everyone likes playing to the handicap, and there's a good chance of doing that round uh, round Torre Cabrano. But yeah. Yeah, and it's just like a fun course as well because like every hole just has something a bit different about it. Like the drivable par four down the hill, which apparently you're not meant to hit a driver. Now there's a sign that says don't hit driver on it. I had, I had a bit of an embarrassing moment there actually because uh, they all went for the green on that mm -hmm. one and I laid up. Because I was out of it and I couldn't reach it. So I was like, I'm not going to hit the ball in the water. Um, and they all gave me a bit, a bit of grief for that. So maybe... That is a rule that when you're when you're on a golf holiday, you should be never laying up. But I definitely was. I wanted to win, so I was like, I can't hit it on the green. I'll just just lay it up and try and pitch it up from there. But just pull a top flight out of the bag. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I'd used all of them up by then. So uh, <laughs> so yeah, there's not an awful lot. But um, but yeah. So yeah, Torre Cabrada, great golf course. Good yeah. pick. You have got good taste. Really good. Yeah. Like just a bit. I don't know. There's so many good golf courses. You could be like Valderrama and stuff. But I'm going for Torre Cabrada. I'm happy with that choice. Yeah, yeah, you'd have to have your A game on for, for Valderrama. That takes no prisoners, that whole <laughs> course. Um, it definitely is, you know, everything you expect from that. It's uh, demanding off the tee. It's incredibly difficult around the greens. And that's why, you know, the pro, even the pros struggle mm -hmm. on it. But it keeps in great condition year round. Like even, 
if you've uh, if you've not played, you know, if you're going to play it even in the winter, it's still you know, it's a fantastic golf course to go and uh, uh, to go and play. But um, obviously, we've got a massive choice of golf courses to go and play in uh, in Andalusia and Costa del Sol. So if you're going to be one golf course that you uh, you would return to, mm -hmm. only pick one. Which one are you going to go for? Could I sort of cheat on this answer and just say a resort? Because I'm going to no, go. For, oh, no, I was going to go for La Cala because I've. You know, no, you've got to pick one golf course oh, at La Cala. Oh. Oh, I haven't played all of them there, so. I know, but it's only the one that you can okay. return to. Oh, this is tough. One course. Oh, I'm going to go for Finca Cortison. I know okay. I haven't played it, but obviously I know the Solheim Cup's coming up, or by the time this might have come out, it might have already held the Solheim Cup. But, you know, I want to watch that. But I, want, I want to play that, because I'm going to watch it on TV, I'm going to see the pros play it, and I want to see how I get on around there. This is, uh, this is incredibly awkward, because that was going to be my answer as well. <laughs> the one, and, and so I have played, I have played that, and, like, again, I talk about, like, service and experience that you get at, um, at La Reserva, think as that, mm -hmm. you know, and more. It's also got one of the most friendly driving ranges you'll ever see. Again, pyramids of golf balls, really, really important touch. Um, but it's really open and wide, mm -hmm. and it just gives you huge confidence hitting your uh, hitting your shots like, just to warm up, because you're just hitting it onto this huge, wide, open expanse of a driving range, just outside the clubhouse as well, and it's just a big um, a big drop down. Um, uh, so again, even if you like, top it off the tee, <laughs> you're still getting a good bit of run out, but, yeah, that is a brilliant golf course. Um, I think the Solheim Cup there is going to be so, so good. I really feel like the, uh, um, I think the European and the US teams are going to really enjoy it. It's a really, really fair golf course as well. Um, again, you know, it's got some very demanding tee shots, but if you can, you know, if you drive the ball well around there, you get really, really re rewarded. Um, and again, some really quite interesting green complexes and... But just in general, like that, that's such a such a great golf course, and it's yes, you know, it's, it's up in the higher end of it. But you know, I I'd, I'd pay that again to go and play. I think you just get such a great service that, um, uh, when you're there, and the the experience is great. So many really really good golf holes there, and um, yeah, one I'd, I'd absolutely love to return to. That'd definitely be my pick as well. So. Copied me down on that one. <laughs> definitely, <No>. definitely. <laughs> when visiting the Costa del Sol, what was the most surprising thing about your visit? So I think it's just, first off, like it's the variation of golf courses. Like mm -hmm. there, is, there is such an amazing array to, uh, to go and play. And, and also it's not something necessarily that you're going there thinking you have to spend thousands of pounds. I mean, these are some of the best golf courses in Europe, if not the world. But there's some really, really excellent value golf courses that are also really close to Marbella and Porto Banu. So if you want some golf and nightlife, um, it's very doable, but so I just think it's the it's the variation that, that that's an offer and and really the value for money um, because you know again these these golf courses are blessed with an awful lot of sunshine certainly a lot better than uh, than we experience in the UK especially in the winter, um, but that and, and equally you know you've got those you've got those great resorts you talk about La Cala I mean there's very uh, very few uh, golfers think much further than La Cala when they're thinking about a European trip it is um, it is that good. You've got Almanara and yeah. Sosa de Grande a bit further down um, uh, towards uh, Gibraltar. Again, like an amazing resort, 27 holes. The condition of that golf course when I played it was outstanding. Uh, I think it's even I think it's even better now. The reports we've got. So, so yeah, I think that variation and the fact that there's value for money and there's just something for everyone. That's the, that's the thing that once you go there and appreciate how close everything is, that's that's the most surprising thing. Yeah, I mean, like you said, the varieties really good you could always fly into Gibraltar work your way all the way up the coast play knock off all of these amazing golf courses and then head back for Malaga but there's so much to do as well away from the course like me and Leo we went zip lining out there went on a private boat you could even see dolphins you know like you said Porta Banus amazing restaurants amazing nightlife you know there is amazing court there's amazing golf but as well as that you can do other things can I yeah. bring the family with you you know, it's more than a golf destination, as they say. I think it's a, isn't it a hole in one destination? <laughs> That's the one, the hole in one. <laughs> if you do want to see, you know, we have got a hole in one challenge coming up at Torre Gabrada. Should have plugged that when we were talking about that. But if you want to check that out, link in the description.
Yeah, it's yeah. I think it, it's obviously it's just so much infrastructure all the way along that coast. You're never going to be that far away from an amazing beach. Mm-hmm. Therefore, you're not going to be too far away from some amazing seafood in uh, in a restaurant that's just been uh, just been caught over uh, over in the sea. And yeah, I just think it's a it's a great spot and just easy to see why so many people go there. Yeah. So so if you were traveling as a group to the Costa del Sol with a mixture of handicaps, is there any courses or resorts which you would recommend yeah so i think the ones that are i mean the one that's the most fair is is probably the carla actually Mm -hmm. like there are there is quite a lot of um uh tee shots especially if you go off the back tees where um you know either not being able to carry it or uh or missing it left or right you'd you'd be in trouble but the vast majority of it around there is is really playable and you know again pick the right tees and you know for the group and everyone's going to um it's going to have a good time it's also not that far. It's obviously, you know, it's it's all on site. So the hotel is there. They've got a really nice sort of nineteenth hole restaurant, um, which the kind of the golf courses feed into. So you're only a short uh, a short walk from the from the courses, which is really important um, uh, for those that don't want to uh, necessarily be travelling off to uh, to play golf in the morning. And also, you're you're not too far from nightlife. There's even like restaurants on the way in as well. Um, and obviously, you can just stay all on on site there. But yeah, I think Lakala is is a place I've been to with with mixed handicaps before, and we've all had a good time there. But you know, we literally send thousands of golfers there every year, and it's just it's just a it's just a resort that that ticks the boxes and it's, it's totally understandable why. I mean, people literally go there year after year after year because it's such a great product. Yeah, definitely. Like that's an amazing place for a group holiday, like the Asia course, Europa course, and then America course. So like you said, you could just stay there the whole time and enjoy some incredible golf. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Which um, course you went, well, you went as a, as a mixed group, obviously with, with you and, and Leo, your handicaps, which ones have you uh, so yeah, for mixed handicap, I would definitely say Los Naranjos. And that was a course that really surprised me. Like the conditioning was incredible. And one of the things I really did like was the 18th hole where you're hitting in towards the clubhouse, like a massive grand clubhouse, like perched on the hill. You could easily quite, you could easily fin one into there. Just wonder, <laughs> I just wonder if anyone's got a nice drone shot kind of like heading up over the uh, over the green then into the clubhouse and the mountains behind I just wonder if there could be something that was overlaid right yeah, now there, there, I think to, there will uh, be I think you'll show, be seeing that at the moment to visualise what you're, what you're talking about yeah um, Miguel Angel Jimenez um, I don't think it's necessarily his home course but I've seen him there before like I think he plays out of there quite a lot um, yeah I that and what a great 19th hole as yeah. well that, that isn't the only thing to do in the uh, uh, in the Costa del Sol but that's again that's a great patio I've had such a good giggle we, we had a, a big trip with um, a lot of the um, a lot of people from Your Golf Travel and we just sat on that veranda and just watched everyone hit it short into the water um, on their approaches so uh, so yeah that's um, that's it there that's actually that is a really really good hole again I played that one with um Mark, Coach, and uh, and Rory, and yeah, just great sweeping dog leg yeah. uh, around to the left. I'm pretty sure I hit it in the water on the left, but um, but anyway, yeah, really, really yeah. good, really good finishing hole. But as you say, like again, mixed handicaps, keeping the ball in play. There's um, there's lots of uh, lots of opportunities. Similar actually, is another course called Rio Real, which is not um, a million miles away from there, which is again pretty similar in terms of giving you uh, giving you plenty of opportunities off the tee. But um, but yeah, I think there's lots of lots of fun places fun place to play and, and equally I, I've sort of done my uh, days as a of playing off the back tees and, and really stru- like really sort of struggling to, to play to handicap. I really want a nice easy round of golf and um, and I think those courses definitely provide you with that don't always have to get yourself beat up no. and you know, I think no, there's a lot, lot lot happier having a uh, having a drink in the 19th when you've got 36 points rather than uh, sort of struggling around for 24 but and then, having to buy, and then having to buy some more balls for the next day straight exactly. away after. Exactly. I never, I never take enough golf balls on me on holiday. I always think I'm, uh, I'm better than I, uh, better than I am. <laughs> right. So I know there's loads of golf courses in the Costa del Sol, but can you pick your favourite hole you've played? That's really testing the memory now. Uh, I, um, I, no, I've got one. Yeah. It's come straight to mind. So this is, this is good. But then again, probably it's one of the holes that everyone's going to think of mm-hmm. when yeah, travelling to the Costa del Sol. So I'm going to go for the 17th at Valderrama, which is not a particularly long hole, mm-hmm. but definitely one of the hardest par fives you're, you're ever going to play. And it's it's one that you kind of 
think you've done the drive, you've got the job done, you really haven't. That approach shot is just so terrifying because there you know that if you, you know, obviously if you're short, you're in the water. If you're long, you're in this impossible bunker. Um, and need to say, I didn't finish the hole. I, uh, but I'm still going to call it out as my favourite. But yeah, I actually I hit the fairway with my tee shot. I'm really happy with that. I thought I'm not coming back here anytime soon. So went for it in two. And um, yeah, I had far too well, far too ambitious, and yeah, ended up in the water. Thought I was uh, better than I was. But yeah, just a really really great hole. And you know, like we've seen those things on uh, on TV, whether it's um, yeah the European Tour event with the Volvo Masters and Andalusia Masters, or obviously the Ryder Cup, which was um, Tiger's first <laughs> Ryder Cup. Um, and Lee Westwoods as well, um, for a famous Seve Ballesteros victory in um, in the Ryder Cup in '97. But yeah, I think that that 17th hole is just a just everything you see on TV is just even better when you play it. So uh, so that's definitely my favourite. What about you, then, Alex? So for me, at La Quinta, so on the A course, hole eight. So this is actually on the trip with Leo, because that was the first time going across to Del Sol. It's just a short little par three, but very scenic. You've got sort of the backdrop with the mountains and 140 yards, water at the front. You'd think it'd be simple, but it was quite tricky. It's quite a tricky hole. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, sometimes just a simple hole. I was just like, this is a really nice hole. It's just a beautiful setting in the valleys, got surrounded by villas. Just felt quite scenic. So yeah. I'm going to go with that as my favourite. It's amazing, isn't it? Just chuck water into any hole, and yeah. suddenly it's the it's the hardest proposition in the world. Um, so yeah, just to sort of move that into uh, into the bright lights of. I remember like I played sawgrass um, quite a few years ago, and thought oh it's just a nice easy hole and it is an easy hole if you just look at it just, just look at the distance you're like well I'd back myself to hit the green on this and yeah just kind of out of nowhere I've fatted it in the water so uh, so yeah that's um, that was definitely a highlight for me but anyway it yeah, gets yeah. into your head put definitely. a little bit of water on any hole um, it does make it a little bit uh, a little bit more magic but. Mm-hmm. right so we're going to end on this one this is a bit of a fun one so you've got some people from your golf club who are interested to head into the Costa del Sol is there a trip you would recommend to them? So like a free, no- a free night, two round trip, where would you send them? So, funny enough, I've actually, I got asked a very similar one and they have just booked this one. So three nights at Sosos Grande, which is recently refurbished, lovely, lovely hotel. And obviously you've got um, Almanara all, uh, all surrounding that there. So we're gonna do three nights there mm-hmm. and then we are gonna play one round at, um, at Almanara, which is on site. Yeah. We're then going to head over to Real Club Soto Grande, which is incredible. Um, if you're looking for a golf course that has, you know, just it's just like it's a little bit older and they've just recently refurbished. It's just a really lovely place to go and play. It's like a, if it's like a real members golf club there. Um, and then we are going to finish up and we're going to play San Roque Old. Mm-hmm. Um, and again, just a lovely place to go. It's got it's real members feel. It held. Um, uh, European Tour school final qualifying for for years and years. It's just a um, it's just a really really great golf course. One that again we talk about like mixtures of handicaps and where it all uh, all plays in and, and that definitely works. So yeah, we're gonna do three nights so sort of grand day, one at Almanara, Rail Club sort mm-hmm. of grand day, and then we're gonna finish with San Roque Old. So I reckon you're going to find it hard to beat that trip. That's a very good trip. So I've stayed at the Sota Grande Hotel and that is one of the best hotels I've stayed at. I must say their breakfast is absolutely incredible. Hotel Ex Benedict, Ex Benedict there just hits. It's I, just so good. I don't know what it is, but genuinely like hotel breakfast, they just, they get me excited. Like I just love, I love, I love a hotel breakfast. I, we should do another one just on hotel oh, breakfasts. We could do. I've had a lot of hotel breakfasts. Just to, yeah, just omelette. Actually, omelette's good. That's a good shout for a breakfast. Yeah, yeah, but there's, but again, like some places you go and it's just got everything. Like yeah. it's, there's no way that you would just be able to go there and stop at an omelette. Yeah, that's true. You're like, you're, the omelette's the starter. It's like, what's the main and then the dessert? And that's the way that hotel breakfast, the really great ones yeah. need, to be, need to be approached. So, oh, I need to think of this really. So I think I would go for Western La Quinta because, you know, that is a actually outstanding hotel. Beautiful hotel got a really nice swimming pool and then the golf you've got three nine three sets of nine there a b and c which are all different different variety of courses a different variety of loops and then away from that probably going to Cabrada 
And then I'm, I'm a bit undecided on the other course, what to play, what to, uh, what to chuck in there. I would say maybe play more golf at the Kinta. Just chill there, experience the hotel. It's such a nice hotel. Yeah, and there's something to be said for just like rolling out of the hotel straight mm-hmm. onto the golf course there. And the yeah, three nines are pretty varied yeah. as well. So there's plenty of choice there to uh, to play. So I think I think you've actually picked a really good one for anyone that wants sort of golf and nightlife. Yeah. Um, those are, you know, you're really, really well placed to, to sort of head out in the evening. Whereas it is a little bit quieter in Soto Grande. I'm a little bit older, it's the gray hair. So I'm, I'm a bit happier uh, doing that. But yeah, heading down to Soto Grande Marina, there's there's a few nice restaurants and, and bars down there. That's that was uh, plenty uh, plenty of nightlife for me. But um, but yeah, so massive thanks for watching. Thank yep. you, Ali. I think we've come up with some uh, some good insight. Hope that people are like, if I was unsure, this is the uh, this is the place to go on my on my next golf holiday. So yep. Costa del Sol we've been through. So the best golf course, favorite holes, what we'd recommend. Mm-hmm. If there's anything more that people need to know, go to your golf travel. Yep. Speak to the golf travel experts. You won't get to speak to Ali and I because we just work in the marketing department. We just go play the courses. We just go play the golf courses. But mind you, so do the uh, so do the sales yeah. team. But you know they get to they get to speak to customers every day, and organise amazing holidays, and play the golf courses themselves. So they'll give you even more expert advice than what we've got. Yeah. So if you want to find out more, click the link in the description. And yeah, thank you for watching.